Shall we start with a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for your presence to be with us as we worship you. We ask that you anoint my lips so you can bring a message of hope and encouragement and uh, to our to you people who listen. May your Holy Spirit be with us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. When I was in the UK many years ago, I happened to read in the Times newspaper on the article called The Disappearing Landscape of the British Countryside. There are three entities in the British countryside that is ever enduring. Number one, the village milkman. He's the one who daily replenishes a supply of blush and fresh milk to the villagers. He will notice if something is not right if the milk is left outside the door without uh, consumption. Number two is the village Bobby. He's a friendly policeman stationed in the village who knew everybody and was an ever-present help. Even though crime in those days was unheard of and villagers wouldn't lock their doors at night. And the third entity is the village priest in the parish where everything on the village is centered on baptism, infant dedication, weddings, funerals, Easter, Christmas, and social gatherings. And even the village tombstones litter the church compound. The priest is the go-to person for whatever happenings in the village. But now modern changes that happen. The supermarkets are replacing the village movement. There are more varieties in the supermarket. Price war between shops makes it competitive killing off the livelihood of the village milkman. And then the village bobby, centralization of the police force and cost cutting have made him redundant. But because of declining spirituality, the church and the priests have lost their influence and status in the village. So much so the churches are turning to pubs and event places like concerts. The changes that happened in my lifetime, number one, transport. Those days, all, most people cycle. My father used to cycle from Ipoh to Tapa, about 58 kilometers, to work in a tin mine, to and fro, once a month. And now this is look at the old Honda motorbike in those days. And my landlord has this old Morris Minor car. Everything's by hand. Needs key to open the car door and boot, no power window, no power steering, no aircon, no interior light. And you want to entertain yourself, you have to sing. And then using the hand to signal. And these are the modern cars that some of us have. And of course, right now we have hybrid cars, electric cars, and soon self-driving cars. For recreation, we have uh, children playing like neighbors. We have carefree days in those days. Childhood innocence all playing together. But now most communities are, stated, are staying in gated communities and condos and super condos like modern prisons. And children have homework and tuition with no time to play. And so we find abundant playgrounds. And not only that, no playgrounds at all in most of these housing uh, estates. And then number three, communication. Those days we have just transistor radio and to the younger generation, we may not know what is ready fusion. Black and white TV, then color TV. Then of course now we have this flat screen, the smart TV uh, that is uh, ongoing. And in those days, we communicate with telegram. I remember it was India, you used to telegram and then cards and letters. Those days, those who are sick or those who need uh, support and help and those who pass exams, you receive lots of cards, especially also in Christmas, Chinese New Year. But now you hardly find anyone posting any cards at all. Uh, same, same with postcards and aerogram. So that leaves us the question, when was the last time you posted a letter? The post office is becoming redundant now. Uh, look at all this public telephone, no more. You cannot find that on the streets anymore. And of course, a house phone, the antique looking house phone. And uh, if 
And those years when we, I was a houseman and MO, we used to have the pager where you have to respond to a telephone, uh, to a pager sound. And of course, nowadays you have these smartphones from 1G to 5G. And of course, portable computers on the go with smart watches. And because of Zoom, it is fortunate for us to be able to communicate and worship together. Eric Yuan was the one founder of Zoom. He got the idea for Zoom while trying to find a way to connect with his long distance girlfriend, a 10 hour train ride away in China. I believe it's God's uh, blessings that we have Zoom so we can have Zoom worship. Now this friend sent us me this, born in 1950s, grew up in 60s, educated in 70s, ventured out in 80s, messed around in 90s, stabilized a bit in 2000s, got a bit wiser in 2010s, make it to 2020. We have lived, those who were born in 1950s, eight different decades, two different centuries, two different millennia. We have been through all this to YouTube, Grandma One Player, to wireless streaming, handwritten letters, to email, WhatsApp, and Zoom. We missed the Spanish flu that happened in 1918, but we are on time for Corona. We started with bell bottoms, went through drain pipes, and then settled in between. Walk, cycle, rode, drove, went on train, on sea, went underground, hung in the air, surfed, flew, and now await the Elon Musk spacecraft to Mars. Wow, what a life it's been. Yes, we truly went through many more. Typically, we can be termed as genials, a crossover generation of people whose birth years were in the 50s, had an analog childhood, a digital adulthood, and now a seen all Asia. Literally, our generation has lived through, witnessed so much more in every dimension of life. This is our generation that has given a new paradigm to the word change. Today, may I share to you the topic to survive the change. To survive the change in financial means. Now, in Singapore, we have the five Cs. The five Cs of Singapore, cash, car, credit card, condominium, and country type country club membership. Popular observational joke about aspiration of some Singaporeans to obtain material possessions in an effort to impress others. Of course, in Malaysia, we don't want to, want to lose out. We have the six Cs. Uh, number six is communication devices. Those who want to know more, you can of course contact Jason and Elvin who knows more than that. And in Penang, we have the Hokkien 5Ks. Number one, Kiasu, scared of losing. Number two, Kiasi, scared of dying. Number three, Kiamo, scared of having nothing. And number four, Kia Chinghu, scared of government. And if you want to ask Jason and uh, Derek, who just been married not so long ago, number five is Kiabo, scared of wife. In this uh, pyramid of wealth, we find that 10% of the population holds 80% of the world's wealth. While in the middle class, 40% hold 18% of the world's wealth. In the lower class, 50% holds less than 2% of the wealth. A great disparity in wealth distribution. In the Employees Providence Funds, Balanja One Coup Expenditure Guide 2019, we have this uh, uh, estimate of people who live in the Klang Valley and what is the money needed to survive. A single person who uses public transport needs 1,870 ringgit a month. A single car owner, 2,480 a month. A married couple without children, 4,420 ringgit a month. And a married couple with one child, 5,730 ringgit a month. And anything less than that, you will be in financial trouble. And of course, when I look at my own bills, here are the bills that I need to pay every month. And you can do that for yourself too. And so we have this article, when we mention young professionals, young lawyers, accountants, doctors, secretaries, bank executives, 
who have just started their professions are living beyond their means for luxury items. They just want to buy things to impress others and make job losses and pay cuts to, due to COVID-19. They are falling into the trap of indebtedness. And in this 2019 survey, they found that seven ten are living beyond their means. Four ten have no savings at all. And for EPF savings, two third less, age less than 54 have less than 54,000 ringgit. Those of us who want, especially young generation, want to know more about how not to be going to bad debt. There's a good article written in the Star Biz on the 24th of July, The Innocent Beginnings of Debt by Yap Ming Hui. You want to read that article? I have it on possession. Here is the survey of uh, Malaysian uh, who in 19, 2013, they found that uh, Malaysian has one of the lowest rates of household savings in Asia uh, uh, compared to the world. And uh, more than 50% have no financial assets at all and a very low EPF savings among Malaysians. And then in this uh, survey done the, to, uh, entitled The Effect of COVID-19 on Economy and Individual, uh, they have found that half of Malaysians said that they were severely affected financially during the MCO period. For those same employees, 71% of savings, of savings only if that lasts for one month. For those employed, 82.7% only last for two months. And so we find in the famous Pataling Street in KL, it's like a ghost town during MCO. It's horrible, very horrible. Even if they, op they open, they won't get any business. Even though E3 can open now, they still don't get many customers because no one goes out. No one comes to buy anymore. And so we find outside the hospital, people selling nasi lemak. And just opposite, the hotel is also selling nasi lemak. All the hotels, even the famous Rasa Sayang, is trying to sell food outside the hotel in order to survive. And so we find in KL, in some of the cities, people living on the streets, not only single people, but even families. It is sad that we find that to happen. And so we have this white flag going on in town. I understand how it is to have no job. When I was young, I think I remember when I was about Sunday 2 or Sunday 3, I saw my father crying just outside the house because he's lost his job. He has about six children to be fed and he has no job. And it was an emotional thing for him and also for me. Uh, Uncle Thomas hasn't come out yet, and now you realize that uh, why I'm so serious. And Uncle Thomas is always smiling because by the time he's out, we are a bit better off. It's not have a nice feeling to have a family when you don't have any job at all to feed the family. They survived the change in climatic condition. Here recently, we find in the flood in Germany and Belgium, all of a sudden it happened. As well as in China, you see people trapped in the subway and almost drown until the uh, people come to save them. And so in US, we find also the heat wave happening in the US. Uh, heat wave, the temperature almost up to 47.9 degrees centigrade. It's the desert heat, very dry and hot. Climate change is causing record-setting temperatures to become more frequent. Globally, the decade to 2019 was the hottest recorded, and the five hottest years will have all occurred within the last five years. And so planet Earth is running a perpetual fever. And in this uh, report from the World Meteorological Organization 2020, the state of the global cli uh, climate. You have this report. Those of you interested can go into it. I don't have time to go into it. But there's another report in 2021 by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. The impact of disasters and crisis on agriculture and food security. It mentioned in 2010 to 2019, 
was the most turbulent decade for disasters. The new decade opened with the COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, huge local swamps worsening conditions for 42 million people across Africa, India and Pakistan, causing acute food insecurity, record-breaking 30 named storms in the Atlantic Basin, far surpassing the 12 storm average. And then disasters as a drought, storms, extreme temperature, averaging for roughly 40 events per year in the 1970s, but nearly quadruple to over 150 annually in the 2010s. Plus, average 30 events, double to 60 in 1980s, and skyrocketed to an average 180 in the 2000s, with a peak of 246 flood events in 2006. And, and we see the ice cap being melted in the Arctic Sea and Greenland and Antarctica. And because of this ice loss, there was there is this rising seas making the coastal cities vulnerable to flooding. To the man on the street, the increase in average temperatures might not sound like much, but its effects are large. Each shift Little shift increases the likelihood of extreme events, including heat waves, heat waves on island and in the ocean, record rainfall and flooding, massive fires, and heat charged tropical cyclones, not to mention the impact of climate change on human health. Those who have time can have go through how impact on our health. To survive the change in political landscape by enforcing existing health laws or by creating new pandemic health laws to control the COVID-19 pandemic, governments of the world are becoming more oppressive and authoritarian. In Malaysia, SOP offenses can have face hefty fines, but in other countries, they can be beaten up or you are asked to write, I'm sorry, 500 times or do push up as punishment. Some of them are locked in a cage and some of them are put in a coffin to frighten them and some are being forced to be grave diggers and a few of them are forced to wear a signboard of shame and then in the philippines of course you have this philippine president who likes to shoot uh, all those police who shoot for people causing trouble during the quarantine period the garden newspaper in the uk has this to say as coronavirus lockdowns have been expanded globally, police across the world have been given license control behavior in a way they would normally be extreme, even for an authoritarian state. Uh, using grueling, humiliating punishments to enforce quarantine on the poorest and most vulnerable groups, including tens of millions who live hand to mouth and risk starving if they do not defy lockdowns and seek work. And then the New York Times in America is mentioned Britain, who has a long history of democracy and well-established democratic customs, have passed the Corona Act 2020, giving the police unlimited powers to enforce the lockdown, banning public gatherings, protests, shutdown ports and airports, all with little oversight. Again, New York Times, it mentioned we could have a parallel epidemic of authoritarian and repressive measures falling close, if not on the heels of a public epidemic. And when these laws are enforced, it allows government to detain people indefinitely, infringe some freedoms of assembly and expression. It could shape civic life, politics, and economies for decades to come because it's easy to construct emergency powers it is difficult to undo them. To survive the change in social environment. In 2019, it is advised to avoid negative people. 2020, to avoid negative positive people. And now in 2021, avoid all people. We have this stress from the virus, stress from the lockdown. So much so families around the globe have been struggling with the impact of COVID-19 and the current rise of infections and deaths worldwide are alarming. Already worn out from the stresses of isolation, fear and grief, people are being required to continue the struggle to survive and live peacefully 
with all the extra demands of work or no work, school or no school, less income or no income. And so we find 1 billion students affected because of the disruption of education. And in India and I think most parts of the world, some children are being forced to work because the parents are out of work. And not only that, students that have daily online lessons have online fatigue, the lost interest, attendance are dropping, and uh, unstable internet connection. Imagine a family with uh, five children, where do you get all the laptops, the, the, the smartphones for, ch for children to be connected? And they lost motivation and loss of interest and teacher all, also have a hard time to have online lessons because they are not used to that. So someone has sent me this explaining the irony in the present situation. Never have ever seen such a mess in life. The air is pure, but wearing a mask is mandatory. Roads are empty, but it is impossible to go on a long drive. People have clean hands, but there is a ban on shaking hands. Friends have time to sit together, but they cannot get together. The cook inside you is crazy, but you cannot call anyone for lunch or dinner. Every Monday, the heart longs to go out, but the weekend does not seem to end. Those who have money have no way to spend it. Those who don't have money have no way to earn it. There is enough time on hand, but you can't fulfill your dreams. The culprit is all around, but cannot be seen. A world full of irony. Be positive, but test negative. So there's nowhere to hide. There are a lot of psychological stresses with little relief inside. Our lives all underwent huge disruption, both at home and at work. Anxiety, fear and blame, then domestic violence increased as food and basic needs could not be met. Children and vulnerable adults became even more vulnerable. And so we find the defenders, the teleconsulting hotline have increased calls, which in March to May 2021, it has 10,412 as compared to almost 7,000 calls last year. And in the first quarter of 2021, 336 suicide cases were reported, over half of the total number of suicides reported throughout last year alone. So on an average, almost four suicide cases reported to police every day in the first quarter of 2021. To survive the change in financial status. No, to survive the change in life status. When you're in 2020, your life expectancy above for an average would be 74.9 years. For female, it will be longer. For male, it will be less. If you're 15 years old in 2020, you expect to live another up another 58.4 years and 63.2 years for female and male respectively. And if you are 60 years old, you expect to live a further 18.4 years for the male and 21.2 years for the female. But the virus disrupted lives expected longevity for all of us. Early in the pandemic in 2020, most of the deaths for people have about 20, 60 years old, especially comorbid risk. And so we find Italian Prime Minister crying for help and because they have lost control. But then we find in June, as reported in June 9, 2021, children cases have been increasing. 82,341 children infected from January 2020 and May 30, 2021, and 30,000 of which were recorded in just one week in June. And there are deaths in children, three deaths involving children under the age of five in the first five months of 2021, 27 children admitted in the ICU, 17 of them were below five. 
And then in July 14, 2021, a 38-year-old baby is the youngest Malaysian COVID death. The Health Ministry also reported a sevenfold increase in cases brought in date of COVID-19 victims to hospital. The COVID deaths in between May 31 to, and June 6, 2021, 54 were brought in date. 14.8% were among those aged 26 to 45 and 46 to 55 respectively. And so we find this forensic pathologist in KL Hospital said, compared with last year, we rarely receive cases at home. We receive cases at the hospital. What worries me now is the deaths outside the hospital which have not been treated. The symptoms are too rapid and this is depressing. We cannot predict the third wave because it involves both young and old. The youngest we received who died at home was in their twenties and have no illness at all. And this anesthesiologist had this to say, to be honest, nowadays when you have to select who gets the ventilator, who you intubate, who you actually save, it takes a toll on us. Right now, with more young people coming in every day, we have to choose to intubate the young one or to intubate the old one. It is very stressful. And so we find in the COVID ward is full of patients, in the ICU is full of patients, and then we have the container as mortuary because the mortuary is full. Antitakers are overwhelmed and the frontliners were really fatigued out and emotionally drained. We have discussed the survival the change in financial means, in climatic condition, in political landscape, in social environment, in life status. We are supposed to be in the fourth industrial revolution, revolution where we're supposed to have artificial intelligence today, where because of this, we're supposed to live be, on, be in paradise on earth. All these breathtaking advancements in science and technology are supposed to herald in an era of prosperity and joyful living, where mankind can live together in peaceful coexistence to advance healthy age. But this pandemic exposes the already dire state of planet Earth and her inhabitants. Now we have 80% of people are barely able to get by because of no work, and no income. Business are struggling and we feel customers and they are laden with debt. Mrs. White, almost 100 years ago, has wrote this as to what happened in the future. Those who hold the reins of government are not able to solve the problem of moral corruption, poverty, pauperism, and increasing crime. They are struggling in vain to place business operations on a more secure basis. And so we find in most countries, the debt to GDP ratio, all countries are in big debt now. In Japan, in China, Singapore, US, Malaysia, all those in the red are in big debt. And not only that, in the future, our monthly can be worthless. This has happened before in Greece and in South America where you may have money in the bank, but you cannot, uh, you're not allowed to withdraw what you want. You're allowed to uh, withdraw a certain amount. And not only that, the money will soon depreciate in value. What you have it can be 1 million, but it can come down to 100 ringgit. Then we have this number two, climatic upheaval. This Person left his home, a 53-year-old mechanic, didn't know that would be his last day. He drove to Parak Road on April 27. Because of a rainstorm, a tree fell on him, killing him instantly. And then this in Germany, where whatever you commit, all of a sudden was gone because of the flood. And this is a cry of Hans Burgers. There's nothing left, empty. The memories are gone, nothing left. We are empty, the memories are gone. There's nothing left. There's only mud and water in their house. And then of course, in the heat wave in US, you see the fire coming closer and closer to your neighborhood. And then you saw 
whatever is in your house all burst into flame and turn into ashes. Whatever you accumulate over the years, climatic change has caused the heat wave and the fire, wildfires and your home is gone in an instant. And then the government of the world is becoming oppressive and tyrannical. These emergency powers born of the crisis have a perfect history of abuse. The emergency never ends, it becomes normalized. And people of the government have learned a lesson they will never forget. At the first sign of danger, people will gladly give up their freedom in exchange for safety or the perception of safety. And that makes us think whether this will condition us to the coming Sunday law. For the first time in American history, no branch of the U.S. government will be led by a Protestant. President Biden will be a, is a Catholic. The Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, is a Catholic. The Senate Majority Leader is Jewish. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court is Catholic. Out of nine Supreme Court Justices, seven are Catholics. And then we find this statement by uh, President Bush during the September 21, 2001 uh, a terrorist attack. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. And in the Catholic Herald, May 16, 2017, this is what has been stated. Therefore, if a man be dangerous and infectious to the community on account of some sin, it is praiseworthy and advantageous that he be killed in order to safeguard the common good. It's always the common good where people can be sacrificed in order to maintain peace and security. And then of course, Pope Francis recently in February 2 in a virtual event, in, he has to say, we cannot say brothers or not brothers, but rather brothers or enemies. And then in, in the social environment, Malaysian graduates have a bleak future. Malaysian saw its number of unemployed graduates rise 22.5% last year to 200,000. More employed graduates are now holding semi-skill and low-skill jobs that did not match the level of academic qualification. And around 3.4 million people are employed or underemployed, which is almost 20% of the workforce. So we see many of these graduates can be grab drivers, can be can, can be salesperson, and it is not to the, what they have been graduated from. And because of that, we have this new term called tamping or lying flat in China. Because earth is like, earthly life is but an endless stressful toy. People are fed up with all the competitive age with little uh, gain. And so they want to work the bare minimum to find a rela more relaxed, less grinding competitive right, red race. Uh, disillusion with the red race, sense of defeatism, growing inequality, and the rising cost of living. Jesus has this to say to those who have stressed out about all these things. Come to me, all of you who labor are uh, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Number five, when we talk about life status, in July 29, 2021, we have this on the corona pandemic, almost 2 million cases, almost 5 million deaths. This comment on COVID deaths by K.A. Katerizen, once a family or friend is bothered with COVID-19, you can't touch them or be near them or see them. If they die, you'll be lucky to be allowed to see the burial or cremation from a distance. Imagine the pain of a son or daughter or spouse unable to give a proper burial or perform the cremation rites for their parents or spouse. I know it. I have patients in, uh, one, in the COVID ward in HDU. No family members are allowed. They will only talk to the phone. And when they're sick or they die, nobody is there to comfort them. So the pandemic is, makes us confront with this question. Are you prepared to die? You may know that the statistics of death happens to people outside. They may not be close to you. 
I have this attitude too until two of my friends that I know of, that we know each other in college, died recently of COVID. And that made me think, am I prepared to die? Are you ready to die? That is a serious question confronting, confronting us now. And so in India and in many parts of the world, we see poly, bodies piling up, no wood for cremation. They have to bury them in the banks of the rivers. And when the, the flood receded or the flood came and uncovered the bodies, you see hundreds of bodies being buried in the river. So Psalm 39 verse four to five, it says here, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away. My life is no longer than the width of my hand and the entire lifetime is just a moment to you. Human existence is but a breath. How Louis have, uh, C.S. Lewis has this to say, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. So it's not too late to consider things that you have not thought of. I'll shift your focus. Here in Col Colossians uh, in chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Jesus promises that he will go to his father's house and there were many mansions prepared for us. And he will come and take him and, and, and come again and receive you us to himself. That where he is, there you may be also. In John chapter 14. Many of the patriots and, and faithful of all have looked forward to the future home in paradise. Where God has promised them a city where he is to be called their God. A heavenly home. When in this city, in this heavenly home... In Revelation 20, 21, verse 4, God has said he will wipe away all tears. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, neither shall be any more pain for former things have passed away. And in this paradise, there is ever flowing streams, clear as crystal. Waving trees cast their shadows upon the paths prepared for the ransom of the Lord. Wide spreading plains swell into hills of beauty. And the mountains of God rear their lofty summits. On those peaceful plains, beside those living streams, God's people, so long pilgrims and wanderers, shall find a heavenly home. Every faculty will be developed. Every capacity increased. The acquirement of knowledge will not be weary. Good news from Naomi and Grace. No more homework and all these extreme studies. The mind will be engaged and will not be exhausted. The grandest enterprise can be carried forward, loftiest aspirations reach, the highest ambitions realize, and then there was new heights to surmount, new wonders to admire, new truths to comprehend, fresh objects to call for the powers of mind and soul and body. And wonders of all wonders, you can have space travel. You can go to the unfettered worlds afar. Woes that thrill with sorrow at the spectacle of human woe and rang with songs of gladness at the tidings of a ransomed soul. I can't imagine with billions of stars and galaxies out there, there aren't any other living soul around. It cannot be. So we shall have face travel to those unfallen worlds and they will share the treasures of knowledge and understanding to us. So we find in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 21 to 22, it mentioned there, they shall build houses, inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of the tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, God, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. God has prepared many things, wonderful things for us. In a world of uncertainty, Jesus remains the same. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus is Christ, is the same yesterday and today and forever. And whatever promises he made, 
is will remain unchanged. And here in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Our sleep is sweet because we trust and rely on God's promises. And so we find in the signs of the times, it says is the nations are in unrest. Times of perplexity are upon us. Men's hearts are failing them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. But those who believe in God will hear his voice amid the storm, saying, It is I, be not afraid. Julius is calling us that in spite of all of what is happening on planet earth, we should not be afraid. And Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. The God Almighty is with us and God of Jacob is our fortress. And for my last slide, when Jesus drew near Jerusalem, he saw the beautiful city of Jerusalem with a wonderful temple shining in the sun. But instead of being joyous over the occasion, he wept over the city. Why did he weep? Jesus wept because the Jews wanted an earthly kingdom, but not the heavenly abode that Jesus offered. Today, we can hardly survive the changes on the aging, ailing planet Earth. With her increasing evilness and oppressiveness and the unending stress to life, Yet like the Jews in Jesus' day, many still choose the temporarily deluded attractiveness therein, without realizing the foolishness of missing out on the real eternal paradise on offer. So the question remains, is Jesus weeping over you today? Are you making the wrong choice? Paradise is on offer for free. May we take advantage of this.